Did you know that there are essentially six phases of disease progression? The first phase is called the excretion phase, and it is at this phase when it is easiest to keep disease at bay. Our body has built-in mechanisms to keep us healthy. We sweat, we pee, we poop, we bleed, we produce earwax, saliva, mucus, you name it. These are all super important natural detox factors. All of our cells act like a flow system. Raw materials come in, some product is made, and waste materials go out. Disease begins when there is a deficiency of raw materials, raw materials being proper nutrition, minerals, H2O, and also when there is an excess of external toxin buildup in the body, such as environmental toxins or a buildup of metabolic waste, and our body is having trouble expelling it. There are so many easy things we can incorporate to support our body with this natural process. Simply eat healthy, nutritious foods, hydrate, move your body, and take time to go to the bathroom to eliminate. It is important to keep things in the excretion phase, as the next phase is the inflammatory phase. And it's in the inflammatory phase when the body starts to produce inflammation in order to get rid of toxic buildup. It is in this phase you may see an excess of discharges and secretions such as excess mucus, pus field acne, diarrhea, excess saliva, excess perspiration, fever, skin rashes, and it is super important not to suppress these. These are signs that your immune system is operational. And these signs and symptoms are your body's attempt to clear itself. If you're already in the inflammatory phase, you may need to give your body a little help with excretion. So you could consider saunas or skin brushing to help move toxins out. Uh, lymphatic drainage and massage are also great. It is at this phase where you'll also need to up your nutritional and hydration game as your body needs all the support it can get. If you can maintain a healthy input and output, your body will stay in optimal health and you won't have to worry about disease. The next phase of disease is the congestion phase. This is the last phase where toxins or metabolic waste actually reside outside of the cell in the body. In this phase, toxins and abnormal proteins begin to accumulate in the body and some are starting to be released back into the bloodstream and the body is reaching an even greater level of inflammation. It is in this phase where we must really focus more on improving circulation by moving more, lots of physical activity to induce sweating. We really need to focus on proper nutrition. We need to make sure we're eliminating any foods that are causing distress whatsoever from bloating to gas to acid reflux really important and we also may have to make sure we're staying well hydrated and moving the bowels and at this phase even earlier phases intermittent fasting can also be useful to give the body a chance to heal Another great tool, of course, at any stage of disease progression is homeopathy, as it can really help support the body and remind it how to heal itself. The impregnation phase. This is also the final phase I'm going to be discussing in this series. This is when functional changes are starting to occur at a cellular level. When toxins begin to overload the system, they start to attack the internal organs causing tissue damage and the reversibility of conditions are less likely. Stress cells are going to start to fill up at this point with unused foods such as lipids and glycogen, abnormal proteins, pigments, calcium, and environmental toxins. In the past, these were all still going through and being released through the bloodstream. Now now they're starting to deposit in the tissues and, be, and they start to do damage. These deposits damage the cell by making it unable to complete its function and the cell begins to break down. This is the phase when fibrosis, which is a thickening of tissue, and sclerosis, which is a hardening of body tissue, starts to take place. However, as mentioned in previous segments, although we may not be able to necessarily reverse tissue damage, we can stop the progression of further tissue damage. Potentially, it takes a lot of work, but movement, proper nutritional support, stress management, sleep, hydration, and homeopathy can all help support the body tremendously. If you're unfamiliar with homeopathy, now would be a really good place to start doing some reading and, re and some research. Find a good homeopath in your area to help as once disease has reached this level of tissue damage, it is very difficult to treat on your own as you will need a deep constitutional remedy to help. If you have any questions at all, please be sure to send me a note.